morning. So it's been an interesting 24 hours. Uh, this one is for the political junkies like me. Um, sitting in traffic, coming down the road, so excuse the road noise again. But just had a couple questions. Um, I think we're starting to see the media narrative turn into the inevitability of Trump, or actually it's been the inevitability of Donald Trump um, getting the Republican nomination. And um, there's a corresponding message of this is how we can beat him. We have to beat him. Um, there's a fear that has taken grip. And it's kind of comical because where have these people been for the last six months? It has been a, you know, it's been essentially a Donald Trump gush fest. Um, and people really not taking seriously um, the people who support Donald Trump, who, who love this version of Donald Trump, this message. And I, and I say this version of Donald Trump for a reason, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so they haven't taken them seriously. And so now we have Super Tuesday approaching um, and Donald Trump could potentially seal the deal uh, for the Republican nomination. Um, unless something crazy happens, it looks like he's going to have the necessary number of delegates um, and, and those winner take all states to get the Republican nomination. Uh, Rubio, you know, good luck. Cruz, good luck. Um, Rubio might not even win Florida, but, you know, that's just my, that's my take on it. But what's been, what's fascinating to me about the Donald Trump phenomenon is that he has leveraged the message of a group of people in a way that no other politician can one, he's self-funded, so he can say what he wants. Two, um, he is not politically correct, so he can go the places where a traditional politician can't go to. And three, he's nimble. He can think on his feet. He cannot provide answers to questions and still find a way to use humor and his arrogance and all those other elements to embarrass his, um, his competitors. Um, so he's posed problems for the other Republican candidates, obviously, but I'm interested in Donald Trump's core. I would venture to say that his core supporters are what we would have called the Tea Party a few years ago. Um, got very active after 2008. They were successful in winning many local elections, shifting the tide uh, in many states around the country, electing largely conservative state legislatures, electing probably the highest number of Republican governors in the, in the country right now. More state houses are controlled by Republican governors than at any time before. So the conservative side has been very successful at leveraging the anger and angst and the frustration of its citizens with government and using that power and that frustration to get people into office. Simple question. Where is the corresponding democratic or liberal or progressive coalition? that is sweeping people into office, that is turning the needle in the electoral process. I'm looking around and I don't see any. These guys have been working since, two, the, the Republicans have been working since 2008. Democrats, what have you been doing? Where is your passionate army that's coming out to vote for a candidate. Well, there's an army, but it's the, its passion is pointed at Bernie Sanders. And that's not the individual that the DNC is putting their money behind. They put their money on Mrs. Clinton. 
Senator Clinton, Secretary of State Clinton, they put their money on that horse. She doesn't have the passion at this point. So where will the sustained effort past the election day come from? Where will the work come from? Who is going to continue to do that work? Where is that demographic going to be? Just a just a question that that I that was bothering me this morning. Second, now looking at the Democratic field, I think we can we can say a couple of things about the the state of the Democratic Party that should not go unnoticed. The Democratic bench is very weak. It is very 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 weak. Let me say again, it is very weak. That's a problem. Because looking past this election cycle, we know that there are a couple of names that are possibly on the horizon for presidential candidates in, in a few years. But as of right now, it's a sad state of affairs if you are a Democrat because Who's out there to run? Who's out there that is willing to step into the fray that is American politics today? Presidential politics at that. I don't know. But not only who's out there to run, when are, when are the Democrats going to play the game in a similar way to the Republicans? Why not put Joe Biden on the ticket early? Why not put him out there? What do you have to lose? He's only the sitting vice president. He only has support from the demographics that your front runner doesn't have support with. What did you have to lose by encouraging him to jump in? I know you wanted to ensure that Hillary was the, you know, had a, had a very clear, Mrs. Clinton, excuse me, had a clear path to the nomination, but in in a head-to-head -head against Donald Trump, she does not do well in certain key demographics, particularly white males, African-American voters. She does not do well. Young voters, she does not do well. Why not put somebody up in the process let the nomination process shake itself out and let's see what we get. But we didn't do any of those things. So now we're in a position where the only option is going to either be Bernie or Hillary. Most likely it will be Hillary that 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 comes out on top of the pile. And that will be the choice. And people will either have three choices, two, actually. They will either not vote because they're not interested in her as a candidate. Two, they will be so incensed at Donald Trump that they turn out to vote. Or three, they will genuinely support Hillary. Those are your three options. And, I, and there are a lot of people that are not happy with Mrs. Clinton being the only option. A lot of people are not happy about that. So the next few months is going to be very interesting. Uh, we're going to see the fireworks. Uh, a friend of mine, wow, she said she's she's actually not looking forward to seeing Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump on the debate stage because Donald Trump, in her opinion, is going to eviscerate Hillary Clinton because of her political past and all of the scandals and just all of the things that he is made light of less for the Republican candidates, what can you do to a Hillary Clinton that is gonna probably have a serious challenge coming into the general? What could he do to her? I'm not actually looking forward to seeing it. I'm not looking forward to that. Um, and by the way, I'm at nine minutes, 42 seconds already. Man, I gotta get this done. Um, what exactly are the, are the Democrats gonna do with Donald Trump when he pivots, when he stops being general election candidate, stops talking the extreme language and rhetoric, and actually 
pivots to his historic positions, which have largely been centrist democratic, right? What happens then when he starts to appeal to a broader base of voters because the uh, primary is over? What do they do then? What do they do at that point? I don't know. And I'm interested to see um, how that breaks out. But um, I know there's been a lot of questions. I'm going to have to find a way to organize my thoughts and do this when I'm not driving down the road. Uh, but I, I just like to know your thoughts on, on, on any or all of these things. What do you think is going to happen? How do you think Hillary is going to fare? Um, what do you do with the Donald Trump that is more centrist and is not as vile and extreme? What do you do with that? Um, should the Democratic Party have more candidates, should have had more candidates on the ballot? Um, I'd love to know your thoughts. Peace.